Good morning, and thank you for joining us for a webinar on new opportunities for commercial clean energy financing for counties. My name is Mark Levine, and I am the Deputy Director of your New York State Association of Counties, and I will be introducing this session for us this morning. Before we begin the webinar, some housekeeping. If you have a question along the way during the presentation, please type it in on the space provided on your webinar dashboard. At the end of the presentation, we will ask our presenters to take up these questions. NYSAC has been working with Energize New York for some time, and we are pleased to be working with them this year as they roll out the new commercial PACE program that they will be talking about this morning. Over the years, 23 counties and 25 cities and towns have used the PACE program through Energize New York. Right now, there are seven active projects at the county level, seven at the city level, and five at the town level. The Energize New York Open Sea PACE program enables counties to offer the benefit of commercial property assessed clean energy or PACE financing to support environmentally positive economic development in your communities. Open C PACE provides long-term competitive financing that facilitates energy efficiency or renewable energy improvements for commercial and multifamily properties. These improvements can help reduce operating costs and negative environmental impacts while making your local building stock more economically competitive and attractive. We have with us this morning two individuals from Energize New York, Sarah Smiley, the Director of Member Services, and Mike Castrocan, Director of PACE Finance. And we also have a member of NYSAC, Russ Kenyon, the Director the Director of Economic Development from Franklin County. I thank you all for joining us this morning. And at this time, I would like to turn the webinar over to Sarah Smiley, the Director of Member Services for Energize New York. Hi, thank you, Mark, so much. We're very pleased to have this opportunity to present our new Open Sea Pace uh, Commercial Pace Finance Program to counties across the state. And I'm joined here, as you said, by my colleague, Mike Castrocan. I'll start by giving a little bit of background about who we are. We are, our formal title is Energy Improvement Corporation, or EIC, although we're on the We are a not-for-profit local development corporation, and we implement the state's property assessed clean energy on municipalities across the state outside of New York City. We are funded by NYSERDA, as well as revenue from financing. Next slide. PACE financing is authorized by Article 5L of the New York State General Municipal Law. Article 5L was adopted to help advance the state's goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, mitigating the effects of climate change, increasing the adoption of renewable energy, and advancing a clean energy economy. And the law established that municipalities fulfill an important public purpose by providing financing for energy efficiency or renewable energy measures. And this financing can be secured through a municipal-based municipal assessment lien on the improved property. This is similar to funding mechanisms for other public benefits. If you just go back. One second, uh, water and sewer districts. And because our financing is based on that municipal based lien, we administer the program on behalf of municipalities that have tax lien authority. So in Westchester, which is a little different, that involves towns, but across the rest of the state, we do it on behalf of cities and, of course, counties. Next slide, please. New York State is not the only state with a PACE a finance program. There are programs across the country. As more municipalities are seeing the benefit of offering this innovative finance tool to their business community to help improve the building stock, as well as um, stimulate economic development. 
and developers are seeing the benefit of having this alternative form of capital to include in their projects. We've seen a significant increase in the use of PACE financing nationwide. Between 2016 and 2018, uh, around $660 million has been invested in clean energy improvements through commercial PACE programs. Next slide, please. PACE financing is different from a traditional bank loan. It's an alternative form of capital specifically for energy efficiency, renewable energy measures, and it can be used for up to 100% of the cost of the project and is repaid at a fixed rate over a term that can match the expected life of the improvements, which is generally 20 to 30 years. So that can be a big advantage to a business that can only get a seven-year term from their bank but want to do more extensive improvements and now can afford to pay it off over 30 years instead. We are financing permanent improvements to the property. So if the owner sells the property, the financing transfers to the next owner as well. So this can motivate a building owner who maybe is unsure of how long they'll hold on to the property and so otherwise would be hesitant to make necessary improvements. PACE financing gives them a means to move forward with those projects. So um, businesses and nonprofits um, might look to PACE because they have, uh, they know they're wasting energy through outdated equipment and therefore they're wasting a lot of money, but they might not have the capital up front to pay for those upgrades. Um, using PACE financing for those energy improvement projects allows them to hold off uh, on using other uh, sources of capital, such as cutting into their operating budget or taking on bank debt. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, developers across the country are seeing the advantage of including PACE financing, and that, be that is because PACE financing has lower costs than other sources of capital, such as mezzanine or equity capital. And so by using PACE, they can either eliminate those other sources of capital or reduce the amount of those other sources of capital and PACE financing can therefore be used to fill a funding gap and get a project to move forward. Because PACE is secured through a municipal lien, um, it helps overcome uh, sort of the landlord-tenant divide in some of these projects because the expense may be able to be passed on to the tenant of the building who is also receiving the benefit of the improvement to the property through increased comfort or lower utility bills. And because PACE is a more affordable option for developers and property owners, it can also motivate them to go further in the levels um, and depth of energy efficiency that they go for. And they can include measures that may have been cut from their budget otherwise. And that, of course, benefits the entire community when they have increased levels of energy efficiency or more renewable energy. Next slide, please. We can finance projects in any type of building, as long as it's owned by a commercial entity or a not-for-profit. That includes multifamily buildings, as long as it has at least five units in the building. We can, the only buildings we cannot finance are those that have fewer than five units or buildings that are owned by or controlled by the municipality because our financing is secured through that um, enforcement of the lien. Next slide. This is a list of the types of improvements that uh, we can finance with PACE. As you can see, a broad range of measures are included, and these are all uh, determined by NYSERDA, which has guidelines that we follow to make sure that a project is, falls within one of these categories. For existing buildings, we can finance energy efficiency measures or renewable energy. And existing buildings does include gut renovations or additions to an, an existing building. At this time, we cannot finance uh, energy efficiency in ground up new construction. However, we can finance renewable energy. And as you'll see, that also renewable energy category includes uh, heat pumps as well as solar. 
We are hopeful that in uh, the next legislative session in Albany that the state law is amended so that we can include energy efficiency in new construction. And NYSERDA provides different pathways for these projects to qualify. It can be done through a comprehensive whole building approach with a cost-benefit ratio, or it can be done through a single measure approach. And it can be also gone, uh, pursued through an existing incentive program, either through NYSERDA or the utility company. And um, we have a handbook on our website that goes into more detail about the qualifications for these different technologies. So EIC acts as program administrator for our participating municipalities. We review the applications and energy audits and scopes of work uh, to make sure it does comply with NYSERDA's guidelines. We source the capital uh, from our cap uh, and maintain that list of capital providers on our website. When a property owner enters into a finance agreement with a capital provider, we record the pay clean on the land records for that property. And we handle all billing directly with the property owner. We have created a PACE lien that is subordinate to municipal taxes. So that has removed the municipality from the administrative process of the billing and collection, and it also removed any financial obligation from the municipality. We deliver an annual report to the municipality that includes a list of the improved properties and their schedule of repayments. And some of you may be familiar with our previous PACE program um, and can see that the advantages to our new program are that there is no longer any administrative role for the municipality once you enable the program. You are not involved with billing or collection. And we have also taken away any financial risk from the municipality. You are not responsible for guaranteeing payment to EIC from the property owner. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I'll go into a little bit more detail about that PACE lien and how it is enforced. Um, as I said, we've created this lien that is now subordinate to municipal taxes, and it is still senior to non-municipal liens. Um, in the case, and this, this lien is divided up into annual installments, and only the annual installment is, can be delinquent and enforced. So in the case that a property owner does not pay their annual installment, the municipality has no involvement with the enforcement of that lien. It is solely up to the capital provider to enforce the PACE lien, which they can only do if they first pay off any delinquent taxes that are owed by the property owner to the municipality. At that point, they can enforce the PACE lien and they have to follow the same timeline of foreclosure that the municipality follows um, for uh, enforcing delinquent taxes. And in the case where a property owner is delinquent on their municipal taxes, nothing really changes for you. You'd follow the same process That you normally do. However, we would have delinquent because the capital foreclosure on uh, by the county by paying off those delinquent taxes. And now I'll turn it over to Mike to talk about our capital providers. Thanks, Sarah. Um, you'll see on the list that we have 12 capital providers currently, and we expect to add more as deals close. It'll it'll bring attention to the program, and we've even had international interest in an entity becoming a funder. So what are the benefits of having so many capital providers? Well, we think you'll get more competitive rates. Uh, there'll be a willingness to do different kinds of deals and different sizes. Some capital providers will do transactions as little as $100,000, while others are looking for 50 million and more. Um, and finally, with that number of providers, there's simply more capital to be deployed in your community uh, as investments. So we would hope to see more competitive businesses and more job creation as a result. Um, we do go through a formal process of certifying capital providers. So we do want to see their experience, uh, the kind of projects they financed, where do they operate, that they're licensed in New York, and that they actually have capital available. So we, we do get an application from them and, and do a pretty thorough review. Um, and, and what 
we've seen is that these providers have pretty broad experience providing both financings and even administering PACE programs in other municipalities or jurisdictions. Uh, some of them even have relationships with national property owners, so they really understand how to source deals. Uh, next slide, please. So how does a commercial property owner in your county initiate a transaction? Well, they go to our website and they're gonna fill out a short application that allows us to determine whether they are, they are a qualified property owner. And that's essentially, among other things, looking at whether they're current on their taxes and that they are in fact a commercial entity. Um, at that point, they'll be directed again to the capital provider section so they can figure out which capital providers they want to apply to. And so again, it, it might be by size of the deal or, or their location that they make this choice. Once the capital provider does decide and the, and the owner decides to work together, um, the capital provider goes through an underwriting process that needs to adhere to the requirements of the program. So they'll make sure through a title search that, that there's good title to the property, no liens or bankruptcies that they're current on their taxes, um, and that if there's a mortgage on the property that the mortgage lender has provided consent for this kind of lien that is superior to the mortgage. Um, once the transaction's complete in that sense, they will submit a deal package to us that will go through yet an, another underwriting iteration. So I will make sure all the docu documentation is correct and we also will have another round of technical underwriting as uh, Sarah's pointed out so that it adheres to nice sort of guidelines as to what is paceable. Um, once that's done and it's signed off on, we file a lien on your land records and then we begin to administer the loan. So it's a pretty straightforward process that really does leverage the experience of the capital providers and art. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to Sarah. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, we started rolling out our new open fee pace program uh, back in April. So as uh, director of member services, it's been my role to work with municipalities across the state to uh, enable the new program. We are no longer financing projects under our old pace program. So we do, we are excited that we expect to close our first project within the next few weeks. However, in the meantime, we thought we would show just a few projects that our capital providers have financed in other PACE programs around the country to give a sense of what the projects may look like. This first project is a renovation of a historic hotel that had fallen into disrepair. And as you can see, they were using a, a multi-layered capital stack. And this is a case where PACE financing filled a funding gap that enabled the project to move forward. And PACE Equity, the capital provider in this case, in addition to providing capital, they also provided other services in terms of project governance and engineering. So that's one of the benefits to property owners looking at the list of capital providers to see what types of services they need to put their project together. Next slide, please. This is another example of a historic building that was renovated in part using PACE financing. In this case, it was, it was an old office building that was sitting vacant and PACE financing was used to convert the building to a mixed use uh, for apartment and retail. And they um, upgraded the efficiency of the building, including the HVAC and LED lighting and insulation and windows. And they also used PACE financing to add rooftop solar as well. And this last uh, case study highlights a different type of project, um, similar to what I was discussing earlier about a property owner who knows they're wasting money through um, aging equipment and uh, lots of wasted energy, um, but they don't necessarily have the capital up front to pay for the repairs. So that was the case with this owner of an affordable multifamily building where they did not have the capital to make those upgrades. They used PACE financing um, to increase the efficiency of the building as well as well in this case to add solar. 
and they saw a significant reduction in their electricity and gas consumption as well as their water use. So that also extended the benefit to the tenants of the building that saw increased level of comfort as well as lower utility bills. So we see how it works for owners, tenants, and the community through um, the, the uh, environmental benefit of reduced emissions. So as I said, I, I'm working with municipalities across the state that want to opt into our program. That does require that the municipality pass a local law as well as to authorize and sign a municipal agreement with EIC that authorizes us to act as um, program administrator on the county's behalf. Once that process is finished, we do ask that you certify that the local law and municipal are, agreement are in effect and that you provide a letter to us so that when we do record a lien at the county clerk's office, they know that we're doing it on behalf of uh, your county. These are all template documents that we provide to you. And because we are administering this across the state, we do require that the documents um, are uniform. So you cannot make changes to the text and we do go through a draft review process with each municipality prior to adoption. But we try and keep it a fairly streamlined um, process, hopefully, for all municipalities to get involved. Next, thank you. Um, this slide shows where we are currently with counties that have opted into our program. So the seven in green are those that have completed the process. Um, I think the slide got a little bit cut off here, but the, um, the ones in black list those counties that have either adopted the local law or who are in process, meaning it's on their legislative calendar. So by the, um, within the next couple of months, we should have 22 counties that have fully enabled the program, which we're very excited about. Next slide. And as I mentioned, we also do this on behalf of cities that have tax lien authority, as well as towns in Westchester. So I've highlighted those here as well. The ones in green have fully enabled the program and the ones in black are in process. So once we're um, through the next month or two, as I said, our total number of participating municipalities will be at 47. And now I'm very pleased to turn this over to Russ Kinn of the Franklin County Development Corporation. Russ was instrumental in getting Franklin County to move forward and working through the process of enabling open fee pace and they were the first county to opt into our new program so we're very excited to have you with us thanks so much good morning everyone uh thank you to uh, mark and sarah for the opportunity and for uh, putting this together uh, i'd like to start with a little background about franklin county and why pace has been meaningful for us uh, for those of you that aren't aware of where franklin county is we are one of the northernmost counties along the canadian quebec border just south of montreal 68% of the county is within the Adirondack Park, of which 40% of the land is classified as some form of wilderness, wild forest, or water. Another 40% of the land within the park requires a special park agency permit for most development, and the amount of land for industrial use is less than a tenth of a percent. Despite these amazing natural assets and being a beautiful place to live, the rural nature of the area with limited development opportunities and infrastructure have created challenges for growth. The traditional economic development and financing resources have not aligned with or been very successful at meeting the financing needs of the types of businesses and investment likely to be encountered in our region. A majority of the area's industrial, commercial, and services businesses are relatively small, locally owned, and typically lacking adequate capital. Due to their modest size, the seasonal nature of the area, limited market sizes, and the burden of maintaining aging buildings and infrastructure, most businesses do not have the risk capital for improvement, expansion, and development projects. Additionally, many of our business needs fall into categories where financial assistance is extremely limited and commercial lenders remain cautious or reluctant to lend, especially with new business ventures. Therefore, additional public benefit financing resources are needed to bridge these gaps and support growth. As I mentioned, one of our key challenges has been our aging and inefficient buildings. High energy costs in the winter and the lack of financial resources to improve their efficiency and pursue other energy options has led to an increase in vacant, decaying, and underutilized buildings. We were first introduced to PACE as a potential solution in 2016. One of our county legislators suggested this could be a good source of financing for supporting efficiency projects and upgrading our aging building stock. 
Additionally, it was an action step for us for clean energy communities designation. So the way we approached the process was to initiate it through our economic development committee with the leadership of one of our county legislators, Carl Sherwin. Started, we started by making sure that all stakeholders were part of the discussion. That included the county legislators, treasurer, clerk, county manager, the real property, the former PACE program, there were a number of concerns raised. First, formally, PACE payments were billed as a lien through the tax county, county tax bill, which left concerns about the process and annual payment structures. Second, there were concerns about the county's liability if there was non-payment. However, the new CPACE program has eliminated those requirements and concerns, and we were able to move the program forward with support from all of our stakeholders. We are hopeful that CPACE will be considered by additional building owners, especially in our community cores, to improve their efficiency, building quality, and energy options. This will improve demand to move businesses into these spaces to reduce vacancy, create more jobs, and strengthen our commercial cores. As well, we hope this financing makes energy alternatives and efficiency upgrades more feasible for additional facilities for manufacturing and industry. We have at least three projects currently considering PACE financing. One of these projects involves creating a 90,000 square foot net zero manufacturing facility powered by solar. They have reached out to multiple PACE financing providers and have selected a capital provider to work with. PACE will currently make up 44% of their financing structure. Without this financing, we understand that the project and the facility wouldn't be viable. The, project, the program is also being considered by a group renovating a large downtown building for reuse as a restaurant, tap room, and housing, and additionally for renovation of a hydroelectric power system. So we will be continuing to market the program and its benefits in the near future, and we appreciate the support of Energize New York in providing these resources to help move our county forward. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Mike. Uh, if if um, attendees have questions, please uh, put them in the dashboard, uh, put them in the area on the dashboard uh, that's available to you. Um, I do have a couple of questions already uh, submitted. Uh, Sarah, uh, if a county or town or city wants to offer this program, to some of their business owners or developers in the, their communities, how can they get started? What's the first step they should take? Sure, the first step would be to reach out to me, and you can also look at the website, but I would send, um, talk them through the process and send you all the necessary documents that you need. And um, I'm available to answer any questions, whether it's, um, from the staff member who's driving the process or the county attorney or any legislators. Um, but the first step is really getting the documentation and uh, sharing it with relevant staff to uh, see if you can get it on your legislative calendar. Should they do that before they go to their um, <clears throat> businesses, business owners and developers in their communities uh, to see if there's an interest locally? I think that's um, that's really up to the the county in terms of what they see as driving the process. We see this as a great tool that the county is making available to any business who might be interested. Um, and we really don't know where we're we're seeing projects come to us from all over the state. Um, you know, from every region of the state, we're seeing interest. So. I, I personally wouldn't recommend waiting to get to see interest from business owners because once you make the program available, that's going to let capital providers know that they can fa finance projects there. And they're the ones who are really going to be um, marketing their services and generating these deals. Okay, great, thank you. And I, I think that takes care of uh, the next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway in case there's a nuance. Do you have, um, does Energize New York have uh, literature that counties can use to inform commercial property owners about the program? Um, or based on your, the answer that you just gave, is that really the responsibility of the uh, capital providers? Well, we, we certainly have um, a two-page flyer that gives a, a general overview of the program. And I'm happy to send that out to uh, make that available to everybody. Um, 
I'd also say our website is a very useful tool that they can send out to business owners to give them more familiarity with the program. And beyond that, yes, the capital providers themselves will be providing their own literature about their particular services. Great, thank you. If you send that to me, uh, we will make sure that uh, the attendees on this webinar will receive that two-pager. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, uh, another question that came in, are properties that are used or leased by a county eligible for the CPACE program? Uh, we would not finance municipally owned properties. So are you, um, it, it, you're saying if they're not actually the owner of the property? That's but correct. If, if I, I believe the question, the question is if, if a county leases a property, uh, property, is that the owner of the property eligible for the CPACE program? We think so, yes. Okay, great. Um, for small building retrofit projects, are there plans to add capital providers that provide financing for smaller projects under a hundred thousand dollars? Is this available to not oh yeah, under a hundred thousand dollars? We're looking at the list right now. I just threw out a hundred thousand because that seems to be the line. But I think one or two do go below. So, for instance, uh, Pace Equity will go down to seventy-five. And, and we had someone on the list who who would have done smaller deals, but they're reorganizing their business, and I don't know when they come back what the size uh, will be. But you know, always check the website because I think we're I think that will be available at some point. Okay, great. Thank you, Mike. Is this sure. available to nonprofits? Yes, it is. Okay, um, and I think you answered this too, but I'm going to uh, ask it again. Can municipal properties qualify for this program? No, unfortunately, and we do get that question a lot, um, but because the security of the financing is based on the capital provider's ability to foreclose on the property, we can't finance anything that is municipally owned because we wouldn't be able to foreclose on it, or the capital provider would not be able to foreclose on it. Okay, right, that makes sense. Uh, are properties that um, a, a county IDA are currently working with are they eligible for this program? I don't see why they wouldn't be, um, because PACE financing can be used in conjunction with other sources of financing or incentives. So they should be eligible. Okay, great. What are typical interest rates uh, today or recently from capital providers? That's going to vary depending on the credit profile of the borrower, but and I, you know this, this is for information only. It's I think it's in the six to eight percent range. But again, uh, um, a well-known strong borrower, borrower might get a better interest rate. So that that's something. If if somebody's applying, they're going to need to shop, and that's you know we have twelve to choose from. So we think the rates will be competitive. Okay, thank you. Is the financing from PACE for an entire property or just part of the property? It's for the entire energy portion of the project that's being done. So it can be used for the entire property, but only the energy efficiency measures or the renewable energy measures that are being installed. Uh, well, if a building owner is, uh, maybe they're upgrading their HVAC system and they're also replacing their windows or adding LED lighting, PACE financing can, can cover all of those measures for the entire building, but it couldn't cover 
Um, sidewalks. Sidewalks, <laughs> for example. Or landscaping. Okay. Um, here's uh, another question. Um, if a building, a commercial building, uh, is in the process of being uh, foreclosed on uh, in REM, are those properties eligible for PACE financing while the county is involved? You mean if there's already a pace filing attached to the property? No, if a if a building or a property is foreclosed on by the county because of of, of a lack of uh, payment for uh, taxes owed, is that property while it's in the hands of the county before the county uh, puts it back up for sale, is that eligible for pace financing? So it, it's an interesting question. You know, technically no, but if it was purchased by a subsequent entity. And we've seen these kind of projects where it was in the process of being purchased. Yeah, then we would move forward once the bankruptcy is cleared. But while it's in bankruptcy, we technically cannot finance it. Does that make sense? It does, thank you. Um, again, and then I have one more here. Um, is the Energy New York PACE financing available for homeowners? No, it is not. This is strictly a commercial a PACE finance program. And that's, okay. Uh, and that's, Go ahead, Sarah. I was just going to, I was just going to add that um, New York State does not have guidelines in place for a residential PACE program. So, um, so until those are in place, we couldn't have a residential program. Okay, at this time we have uh, no further questions. Uh, Sarah, do you have any uh, final thoughts before we end this webinar this morning? I just wanna thank you all so much for joining the webinar today. And um, I encourage you to reach out and I'd be happy to speak with you one-on-one -on -one and um, go through the documents and I, uh, yeah, we're just excited to see this adopted by more and more counties across the state, and I would love to speak with you. Great. Uh, I thank you very much. On behalf of uh, NISAC, its board of directors and members, I thank you, Sarah. And I thank you, Mike, and I thank you, Russ, and uh, best of luck. And uh, if, if anybody on the phone has any additional questions, please feel free to send an email to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.